What I wanted to do is kind of give you a kickoff in terms of what I'm thinking and what we're thinking from a Lockheed Martin space standpoint and why we're even doing this today. You know, I think when you look at the, the, the whole visionary concept here around space destination 2050, right? It, it's really, why do we pick 2050? Okay, what, what's magical about 2050? Well, first it's a nice round number, right? Um, it's also 28 years out. And so it's not so far out to be science fiction. And it's close enough that if we've got technologies we need to be working on, we can start now and have time to get them in place by the time we get there. I also think part of this for everybody is, is think about, if you think that's 28 years in the future, to kind of set that stage, think 28 years backwards. 1994. How many people were even in the space business in 1994? It's probably unfair to ask. But, but if you think about space in 1994, we didn't have a space station yet. You know, the shuttle was flying. There was only a couple of launch providers. Just not a, lot of, not, not, not a lot going on like there is now. And there's a huge dramatic increase in technology and a huge dramatic increase in, in, able, in that technology enabling us to be able to do things in space, not just as Lockheed Martin, but as industry. So for us today was a, an opportunity to really have the, a, a thought leadership with industry, with our customers, with anybody here in town. So your, your job today, those of you that are here, you're not an attendee, you're a participant, okay? And what do I mean by that? I've got folks, you see these folks over here, they're, they're waiting for all of you to come through and they're gonna want some feedback. They're gonna want to do, hey, wh what do you think? Did we miss something? Did we get something close? Are we right? Um, what do you think's gonna happen? And, and the way I've been framing it with the team is, is this way. Technology is gonna have to balance with policy and gonna have to balance with workforce of the future. So you think about those three things. So, so I believe that, that some of those are gonna be revolutionary and some of those will be evolutionary. And balancing the revolutionary part with the evolutionary part can be tough. I mean, think about some of the things, you're gonna look at Smart World over here as an example. Smart World's gonna to talk to you about sensors and how we make, the, make cities and towns and, and states work better with all the sensors that are out there today. Then you get to the policy side, what's the, what's the privacy? How, how can we use that? We'll we be able to use that, right? I believe the technology will be revolutionary. I think the policy might be more evolutionary um, as we move forward. So those are the kind of questions we're asking ourselves in terms of what we're gonna go do from a technology perspective. And then we gotta have the workforce of the future too. We've got a lot of folks here. We've asked a lot, some students from local universities to come in and, and give us what, what, what they're thinking because they're the ones that are gonna be doing this in 2050 as we move forward. So that's kind of the, the scene setter. I think the collaboration, we really are looking for you to collaborate with our teams, walk through, Tell us what you think we missed. I mean, it's that simple, right? Um, and and we, we'll just take all that information. It's not just for us. This is for industry, and we're really trying to set the stage and have start the dialogue. The real key for us is starting a dialogue around what does 2050 look for. So there's really three focus areas that, that, that we're working on. The first is, is a, a, a cadence of te technology demonstration missions. Why is that important? One of the key things we hear from, from folks is you've got to have maturity. Don't be, you know, let's, let's mature these things before we actually put them into a program or record. So we've got a, tech, a cadence of these technology demonstration missions where we're working with lots of partners, not just Lockheed Martin, to, to get things on orbit faster, to get things in place faster, or even test them here terrestrially to make sure we're in good shape um, before we actually deploy them into a program or record. That's one thing. Second thing is, is there's maturity, then there's speed. How many people are asking things to go slower? I don't think that's ever gonna be a problem. Nobody's gonna tell us, hey, y'all just go slower. Now, we're getting told to go faster. Everybody is. Um, and, and when I say we, it's, it's us as an industry. We're all being asked to go faster. So how do, we, how do we do that? And part of that is we partner. We look at ways to partner with folks that may be ahead of us. I don't have to do it all myself anymore from a Lockheed Martin standpoint. There's a lot of folks out there that can help us do that. Um, I was speaking at Satellite Innovation last week and the number of companies that were there that were brand new but had products and had things they wanted to bring to the table to help us get these missions done. Their agility, our scale is an opportunity for us to, to uh, again, meet the customer mission needs that we've got to go do. And then the last thing really is, is resiliency. When you think about the future state of what we're trying to do, we've got to be resilient. And that comes in many forms. I mean, resiliency comes in all sorts of forms. If I ask you all to write down what resiliency means, and that's part of what we're going to do today, is I want you to tell us what you think resiliency is. Sometimes that's cyber. Sometimes it's a distributed architecture. It can be any number of things that, that we deal with. So, so those are kind of the focus areas for us as we look at it. And I think 
you know, the big thing for us it, 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 when we look at our mission areas, especially in Lockheed Martin space, it's always going to be three things. We're always going to be doing protect, connect, and explore. So I don't care if it's six decades from now, you know, a century from now, we'll be doing protect, connect, and explore because that's what we've done. What do I mean by protect? Protect is, is the ability to protect our home planet, protect our warfighters that are in the field, bring our astronauts home. That's what we do. And the data that we get from all our systems and everything is, is about that protection. For connect, it's, it's pretty simple. Connect us globally, connect systems that we don't even build. And we're going to have the advantage with AI, machine learning, all these different things that we can bring forward. Quantum computing will be a game changer there as well, right? As we look at that, at that the connectivity. And then exp explore. I mean, that's, 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 what, that's the, the kind of the, the, the big thing we get to do. I was seeing another, another image from James Webb Space Telescope, and we, we happened to build NIRCAM, which is the main instrument on, on the telescope. And you saw the, if you saw the image today of the, of the pillars, wow, just unbelievable things that we get to do. We're bringing a sample back from the asteroid Bennu. What are we going to be doing in 2050 when it comes to exploration? Right? There's an opportunity for you to help us design your own moon base back here. What are going to be the elements that go into that? What are going to be the elements that go into when we go to Mars? So those are the kind of things we're thinking about. So as, as we look at this, we're not going to have all the right answers here. right? And so we really want this to be a dialogue. So when I say I hope that you will be a participant and not just an attendee, I mean that. These folks are here to listen to you. We really do want to listen. Our ears are open, and hopefully we'll start setting some of the, some of the bits for the future for space, not just for Lockheed Martin, but for the entire industry. Y'all have a great time. Enjoy yourselves. Thanks. <laughs>